Good morning, everybody. Happy Saturday. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Welcome, Mark Anderson. Uh, coffee and guitar. Mark, uh, how do you take your coffee? Um, First question of the day, the important uh, stuff. I like it with some cream. Yeah? Generally. I like it. I got a setup over here. Although sometimes black is, uh, t depending on the... I've... I've... Coffee. I've but nice transitioned away from yeah, yeah we we like this one. That's plenty. This of has been the longest lasting coffee maker thing tool we've had in this house. Mm. That's that, that's very tasty, very good. Wow. Mm hmm. Uh, there's cream there for you. There's a little cream. Oh, well, let me think about it. Let me think on it. We got all morning. We've got all morning. So. Coffee and guitar last uh, spring started bringing in guests, feeling comfortable having folks over, and and I've been thinking about what do I want to do with this show, and I've been imagining a forest of guitar players up here in the Northwoods, this forest of guitar players, and who who are the giants, who are the big, who are the guitar giants, and I can't think of any more... There's no more guitar giant of the Northwoods than well, I, you know, I'm, I'm than tall Mark. I'm taller than most of the rest, so I guess that gives me an advantage. Yeah. So I'm really glad to have you on, man. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna start off with some black coffee and warm up on some blues for the morning. Absolutely. Uh, there's lots to talk about. We'll get to it. Thank you. 
look good. We both we both like that F thirteen, don't we? Yeah. Hey, Mark. All right, that's black nice, coffee. Nice, yeah, nice work. Feeling good. It's a, it's, it's a nice way to start a Saturday. Yeah, it's a nice sunny day. Mm-hmm. Better than yesterday. Too gray yesterday. It was too gray and cloudy, and I wasn't feeling so good. So. Well. I had a good excuse. <laughs> <laughs> A foggy day in Zena the town. Uh-huh. Who's here? Oh, hey. Good morning, Sister Kim. Hi, Mom. Hi, Aaron. And John. Uh, all right, Sandy's here. Love the sounds. Good morning, Aaron. How's the game going? How's everybody doing? Go Greyhounds. Um, yeah, man. Um, Curious, what's uh, what's your guitar story, more, Mark? How do you how do you get started? Like, wh- how do you get started? How did the guitar find you, or you find the guitar? Um, as my mat- uh, paternal grandfather, I have a uh, grandpa Les, my dad's dad. He was a ba- an old time banjo and fiddle player, and um, so going up to grandpa and grandma's as a kid, there was always music ar- ba- music around because him and all of the great aunts and uncles used to get together on weekends mm-hmm. and play old time music. You know, yeah, the, yeah. The old time, well, old uh, the Cannonball, whatever, the Wabash Cannonball, and um, Turkey in the Straw, and all that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. Right? Mm-hmm. And this land is your land, and all that kind of stuff. We used, they used to play that stuff on weekends. My grandpa Les. In fact, I guess back like during the Depression. They used to play house parties and stuff and pass the hat, pass the hat. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> kind of way to make a little extra income. But anyway, it was mostly kind of through him that, and then, so in, he he used to have instruments around, because he was a banjo player and fiddle player, but he also, he, and he played tenor banjo. Mm. And uh, people in the uh, audience don't know that tenor banjo is four-string banjo. It's not a five-string banjo. It's a strumming, it's a plectrum banjo. Mm-hmm. And, uh, he used I have to... a five-string banjo, but I just took that fifth one off because I didn't know what to do with it. <laughs> Sounds like a good start. <laughs> but he used to take guitars, six-string guitars, and shave down the necks <laughs> and turn them into four-string guitars so he'd string it like a banjo, like a four-string banjo. Wow. And play That's it. like the opposite of Billy's story about stringing everything like guitars. So and this was you know this was an accepted kind of way that, you know tenor guitar was a you know that was yeah. a fairly common instrument mm-hmm. you know, back in the day, but anyway so that's my guitar story so I kind of got from Les. hooked on music from Les and it was actually banjo and um, mandolin that I played, and mandolin is a good instrument for a kid. Yeah, right. Small you know you have to pull push down two strings at the same time which is kind of hard but it's I a wonder... smaller it's a smaller frets a smaller instrument it seems like. Uh, well, at least I took two. I wonder if that's more or less painful when you don't have the calluses yet. On yeah. De- on developing calluses, the double strings. And because the strings are at higher tension, they're, they're cl- it seems like they're closer to the fretboard, the fingerboard. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Talk and, about strings. Um, I also love to ask about string. What, what strings do you use? Yeah, and then, look, for a jazz box like this, what we call a jazz box, an arch top... It's generally stainless steel flat wounds, mm-hmm. which is which is the the kind or the type, and then the brand. I've found Labella to be the best. Labella, great, mind, great minds think alike. It took me a long time yeah. to find them. How how long have you been playing Labella? Oh, off and on for probably ten years. But every you know every once in a while I get to I have to start to think it. Oh no, I bet you a, a pack of those DRs that are on sale will be just fine. Mm-hmm. They're not. They're, the same. Not. <laughs> they're not. The I mean, they're fine. They're just fine. <laughs> they're just fine. <laughs> they're yeah, just that's fine. about it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I I was getting frustrated with my 13. It was not. It was too light. My, my 13 on top. So I started looking for a set of 15s, and it, this was just a couple of years ago. Oh. And and that's that's when I found Labella because I couldn't. Diodario goes up to 13 yeah. and. Yeah, it's hard to find a set of 15s. And Grandpa Les used to, he swore by labellas for his banjo strings. That's really? That's the kind he would play on yeah. banjo. And fiddle. After, yeah, labella was everything. I didn't even know about labella until I was you know, looking for heavier strings. We also have the same Bert- Bertolini. Bertolini. Simil- similar. Similar. We had weird Why, you, you, you installed, you chose to install this. Yes. I don't, I am, like I was saying earlier, I... 
am comfortable admitting that I'm gear stupid. I'm really excited about this guitar because because Ed made it and decided on things, and I'm sure they're solid decisions, and it all sounds great. Yeah. yeah. Why do you like a? Why do you go with this pickup? There. <laughs> why do I like it so much? <laughs> yeah. I don't, of all the pickups, it's a sealed pickup. It's so it's modern construction. What it, it's I'm sealed, it's sealed, really dumb. It's sealed in wax or whatever oh. compound they use. So like it's, the, a, the, it's a modern construction. It's not some old pickup from 1950, <laughs> you know, whatever, that is going to have all kinds of um, harmonic uh, extracurricular activity <laughs> potential anyway. You I know, like extracurricular <laughs> activity. <laughs> that we don't really want. Right. Right. And, that, you know, and that's the thing, you know, the, and with the Bartolini, there's a few of the, the, of this brand that I would put in this category. I think um, uh, I think Markley is it Markley? I think they make a pickup similar to this, but it's it's really the style. It's a it's a humbucker. Mm -hmm. It's sealed. It's a humbucker that's like. See, am I what I'm imagining is accurate? Like it's just like poured in wax, so it's. Well, there's right. two there's two coils in it that are mm -hmm. that are internally wired, and then yeah, sealed in some kind of a wax or hmm. some kind of a thing, which and uh, that sort of insulates. For the posts from interfering with each other. Yeah, and from all kinds of extracurricular harmonic right. wavelengths and stuff like that. It just it makes for a quieter pickup. And the humbucker, a humbucker actually squish, squishes the dynamic range for mm -hmm. you know dynamic range people out there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so if you put a signal, was this note, say, on a scope, maybe a little higher note, and you put it on a scope through a single coil pickup, you would get a higher wavelength. You mm -hmm. would get higher, more upper partials and more mm -hmm. lower partials. The humbucker actually squishes. And you get more mids. And you get, well, you're just taking things off. Yeah, right. So, yeah, are you getting more? You're getting, you're getting more of this or less of the other. You're getting less of the other. That's what you're getting. <laughs> but, yeah. but, yeah, that, but that dynamic range can be very, kind of nice to have a squished but dynamic range. You can mm -hmm. drive speakers and you can get a real, and for this, uh, for a jazz guitar, for this kind of sound, in my mind anyway, that's kind of what you want. Yeah. You want, you might not want that for a Strat. Right. You might not want it for a Tele. You definitely want it for this kind of sound, if you ask me. It's yeah. It's the only way to go. So. Mm -hmm. so it's a humbucker. It's got to be a humbucker. It's got to be sealed, and it's got to be modern. It's a mm -hmm. Bartolini. Yeah. And right. I'm, I just get tired of old stuff that is constantly, you know, and there's a reason why they're making them like this. And mm -hmm. actually... Um, I was going to say, it's, I think it was Eddie Van Halen who first came up with the idea of dipping his pickups in wax. Really? Because he was constantly experimenting with all kinds of things and pushing things to the limit. Learning something new today, and folks. He, and he actually took, he was constantly swapping pickups out of his guitar, mm -hmm. trying to find which one was a little better than the other or whatever, whatever he was looking for. And then he'd come upon the idea at one point, oh, wait a minute. Because he's getting all this noise, all this kind of squealing, and I well, so he dipped the pickup in wax, thinking that it would insulate it from, and sure enough, it insulated it from. It's, yeah, <laughs> and uh, yeah, there's a guy. Well, this, is, this is fascinating. I've been excited to ask you some of this stuff. You're also an electrician, not only a fine guitar player, but oh, yeah. you know some about some of these things. Well, yeah, enough to make me dangerous. <laughs> me, me too. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, Eddie is. I don't. He might not have been the first to do it, but when a person of his stature does something like then it, that, then, then all of a sudden it just explodes. Tends you know? to catch on. Well, we should play some more music. Mm -hmm. um, another standard here. Have you met Miss Jones? Yeah. So we're just gonna do a bunch of dorky jazz music here. Yeah. You. Uh, it's so, my favorite kind. So I'll just play the head, and we'll figure it out somewhere yeah. along the line. It's, How about? Um, it's just jazz. It can't be that yeah. hard. Right. I can just give us a couple bars up front. Okay. It'll turn around up front. Sure.
Wars. Okay. Jones, it lays so nice. It lays out so nice on the guitar. Yeah, it does. It's a yeah, it's a, and it's a nice melody. You know, a lot of these. Uh, that's my I guess my complaint about a lot of these bebop tunes is, well, the melodies. I mean, they're difficult to play, and um, and that's part of the reason why they were built that way. You know, mm -hmm. they were kind of built on purpose to be, you know, kind of a test of to be inaccessible to, to be, some. You know, <laughs> But but there's a trade-off for that, and it ends up being a lot of times a melody that well, it's unwhistleable. Whistleable. You can't whistle. Whist. You got to practice whistling. And you're not going to remember it much of it because it's a really good. so. And and that tune, uh, "Have You Miss, Met Miss Jones," happens to be a song that has the elements that a bebop song would a bebop player would like, which mm -hmm. is a bridge with some nice changes, let, let's, mm -hmm. let's meat and potatoes to dig through. Mm -hmm. It has, and if you ask me, anyway, it has a, a very nice melody and a, and a tuneful Super song follow, that you yeah. can kind of hear in your head when you're tuneful, walking down, yes. the, skipping down the street on a sunny day. You can skip. Another great tune that I heard you play in, uh, on Leslie's show a few weeks ago was Harlem Nocturne, Harlem and Nocturne. I got excited right away when you started playing. Oh, we should do this one. <laughs> yeah, I've never played Harlem Nocturne before. Uh, but yeah, you know, it's, it's been fun to work on. Yeah, you know, as you know. Jazz guitar players, you know, we, we kind of enter a different kind of world. When we, we did, when we decide, oh, we're a, I'm a solo jazz guitarist. Well, that means that well, really, you should be able to play everything. Mm. Why not? Mm -hmm. I mean, you should be able to play. Because and Darren probably knows this as much as anybody that has. We we start learning these what we call chord melodies, right? Mm -hmm. You're trying to play the melody and the chords of the song at the same time, and you can do this with all. Oh, Uh, songs like that, whatever. But um, let's see, what was I getting at? Well, you know, the, Harlem Nocturne. Yeah, well, it gets to the point where um, there are some songs that are next to impossible to really do as a chord. Melody. Oh yeah, yeah. And as much as I want to, as much as it you just want doesn't to. work out. And so that's so that's another part of the challenge of the solo guitarist is mm -hmm. to try to take those songs that are very inaccessible, so to speak, and try to make them work for mm -hmm. solo guitar. And it's kind of it's a fun challenge. It's, it's another a challenge, and it's you know welcome to welcome to my nightmare. Something, yeah, right. <laughs> Trying to I figure find, this stuff I find out, it's something know? good. It's something good for a an obsessive mind to fixate on all night long. These challenges. Yes, it is. How am I gonna? <laughs> how uh, I wonder. Well, we should we should get into playing here. Major minor uh, minor major seventh. How do you approach a minor major seventh chord? I, I, I always like to ask that of a guitar player. I really just play a lot of um, minor stuff and just try to remember to throw that. In there. <laughs> try to throw that. Good. Throw yeah, that that's pretty close to my approach, too. And, and there is a Locrian thing you can the do. The Super Locrian, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
so you can do stuff like that. Good. Well, I, I'm um, comforted to hear you talk about it. Like, there's this low grade thing you can do, but I'm. You're thinking about the triad. Well, I kind of trying to throw in a major seventh. Yeah, I kind of. Um, yeah, I and I, and I but I've always tried to. Um, you know, get away from scalier thinking, kind of. All these Chord scales, you know, and try to more try to think scales more attached to, attached arpeggios, to, mm. arpeggios within chords, arpeggios of chords Joe within Pass scales. Joe Pass talks about chord you know. scales. Yeah, chord so scales. play a chord and then play the scale from the bottom yeah. to the top note. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, right. that kind of stuff. I try to... I, I, that that's a particularly interesting chord to me, the minor major seventh. It doesn't come up much, and then when it does, I'm always at a loss. Like, oh, dude, what do I do with it? And uh, Kyle, at, when Kyle was here in June, we played Moonglow, and Ron and I played Moonglow too. And it, it starts opens with that C major yeah. major seventh, minor major seventh. I ask the same question. So you're mostly thinking triad and playing around it or minor and mostly where you see seven. the yeah mostly where you see the minor major seven in music is in that descending thing right there mm -hmm. right there's the minor major seven and you're just sticking in minor yeah but yeah but as a chord on its own what are you supposed to do over that you know? and that that's why in the end it, Yeah, let's do it then. me Nectar. Yeah, that's enough of that. Yeah. <laughs> I missed our bridge there, sorry. That's okay, yeah. That's, uh, you know... Uh, we're just making this stuff up, though. We're making it up as we go along. 
Let's check in here. Ooh. Dribbling coffee on my guitar. It is coffee and guitar. Um, let's check in here. Uh, Sister Kim says, I'm not a musician, but the talk is fascinating nonetheless. I find, yeah, isn't it great? I love, I love watching, listening to people talk about what they know about. Yeah, um, well, you know, well, we're both um, protégés of uh, Billy Bernard. It's true. Both alums of the University of Minnesota here in uh, Duluth, our fair town. And we've both been through the Billy's, uh, kind of Billy's, uh, Hi, Barb. Billy's program. Yeah. We have, I was on... I was on the phone with him a couple days ago. He might, I don't know if he's out there listening now, but I let him know you were coming. Uh, I'm sure he'll catch the episode at some point. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm working on, I'm working on getting him here. <clears throat> Billy. <laughs> You're next, pal. <laughs> <laughs> he knows. Uh, what's up? Um, you have, let's get into your stuff. You've got okay, you've you got a bunch of, of records you've done. You've done a lot of writing. I, uh, done a lot yeah, of writing. You got yeah. a lot of original material. Just haven't gotten around to recording a lot of it. And, um, and working on a Latin record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that'll be the next. And yeah, and this will be on. Hopefully, will be on that. Yeah. Record. So are these tunes you've been collecting over a period of time, or yeah. have you been just writing for a record now, or? It's generally songs that have accumulated over time, and you know. I guess, you know, the ebb and arc of life. You know, mm -hmm. there was a time when I was writing a lot of music and I just haven't been writing that much. Now I've been trying to figure out how to orchestrate music. I really, what I really want to do is try to get, a co I have a couple of orchestra pieces that I'm working on oh, cool. for full orchestra. And they're actually, uh, um, we call theme and variations of some of these songs. Mm -hmm. And so I actually was trying to, would like to try to get one of, couple of those it'd be nice to get a couple of those done this year and who knows seeing as how i am an, an alum of our music uh community here our collegiate music community mm -hmm. here you know maybe i could actually get a play or at least run through in some rehearsal it might mm -hmm. be something for amusing for a conductor to, <laughs> to <clears throat> get a a piece, you know. Conductors are always looking for some amusement. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, get a piece written by a guitar player. Mm. It's like uh, I can, I can just see everybody in the orchestra all they, really written. How, they write? <laughs> they can't even read guitar players. What do you mean written by a guitar player? <laughs> I can say that. Uh, <laughs> I think. David, I, I think I missed the bridge, but what happened there is it, it's not that you don't cross the river, you just find yourself suddenly standing in the middle of the river, and you need to push on through. We're on the other side of the river now. I know that. And we're going to play some... It'll be fine. We haven't rehearsed this one, but as we said, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. It's, yeah, it's a song I wrote, it'll be fine. It's, it's a simple song. It's just a... It's just a bossa nova. It's just a very... It's got a little, little tag kind of end on it with that... Mm -hmm. So, um, but anyway. Did you just start on a C minor vamp, or? Sure. Yeah. Or do you want
yeah, it's a nice tone, nice tune. It will be fine. It will be fine. Turns out it, it will be, be fine. Turns out it will be fine. Yeah, well, It'll right. be fine. It's uh, that's a, it's the favorite. My that's my mom's favorite thing that I say. It'll oh. be fine. It'll, it'll be, be fine. It'll be fine. What about know. it'll be fine? It doesn't annoy her at all. It'll be fine. Yeah. Right, mom? Uh, ooh, there's lots of uh, Tracy. Um, you know, Sandy says Hector Berlioz composed on the guitar. Hector Berlioz composed on the guitar. Yeah. So and so did. Uh, Antoine Carlos Jobim. Mm -hmm. That's you know, there's a song that we could talk about. It's kind of interesting. The girl from Ipanema. It's a very interesting song. Um, and it shows up everywhere. It, I heard it in like a sub top forty thing on pop radio today or this summer. There's. And because I'm so the, out of touch, people. Because of this thing called, oh, I must have left it in the other room. This thing called the Real Book. Which oh, the Real the, Book. The jazz guitars mm -hmm. and the jazz aficionados will probably know. Those who have been through a college, or maybe even a high school jazz program, are probably familiar with the real book. In the real book, um, a girl from Ipanema is an F. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But there was one time when I was sitting around the house and I had the greatest hits of Antoine Carlos Jobim going in the CD player. Mm -hmm. And they happened to start in this tune, and this is with uh, Astrid Gubertel singing. Mm -hmm. And I happen, oh hey, you know, and I pick up the guitar, and lo and behold, they're playing an E flat. Mm -hmm. And so Stan Getz's version, I think, is an F though. Hmm. I wonder if that was a. It's just something that it's, it's yeah, it's just something that the guy copied down, yeah. and it just became the. And where actually he wrote it in E flat, and. Mm -hmm. he, and if you play it in E flat, what's really interesting this is for our guitar players out there. Here's the, you know here's our mm -hmm. opening little salvo to the F six. Oh, it changes the because it puts the whole thing on the and then F the minor the, starts with the root on the fifth instead of the sixth. That and changes the, everything. Oh, that's nice too. Mm -hmm. And then the bridge goes up to. It's a guitar song. Oh, it's a guitar. It's not a sax tune. Ah, oh, horn players getting in the way of every. I'm getting in the way of everything. That wasn't it. Horn yeah, players. Yeah, so that's what's fascinating about you know even though that it's in E hmm. flat, you go to that bridge and you have all these open strings. Open that strings, right? Guitar players we like to utilize mm -hmm. because why? Because we can. We have these big. Why not utilize these big beautiful? Yeah. Open Joe Pass says avoid them. Well, Joe Pass, <laughs> welcome to his opinion. It is welcome to his opinion. I think there was a time in those days, too, that they... Because, because it's easy to just sound... It's easy to not sound jazz. It's easy to just start sounding folk. Yeah, well, you know... So you got to be careful with open what strings, I think. In what context you're using them in. you know? Because I can think of... Now I can think of a couple of tunes that Joe Pass used. A couple oh, yeah, of open yeah. Strings, you know. he, I just remember one interview where he says, you got to be careful. Not too many... A they, minor. Yeah, and, they, and they, maybe they wanted to make a distinction between jazz and cowboy chords. Right, that's what he was talking about. Which are generally not used in the old uh, the jazz idiom. No, they are not. Um, oh my goodness, we've only got 15 minutes left, here left. Which isn't bad, but we've got a couple more. To, we should get to the music. In the dark. Now, tell me about this. In the, um, yeah. uh, the title, I would say, is Apt. Yeah, so How did you, as I've been working on this, the melody makes sense to me. There's a tune there. I can follow it. It took me a few reads to, yeah, there's the tune. How did you find these changes? I can't make sense of them. I can't keep them in my head. <laughs> I'm going to be staring at that music this whole time. How'd you yeah, come to this? So I came to this, I had this idea of writing, you know, seems how I fancy myself, something of a composer. Mm hmm um, I had this idea about writing, writing changes, and and what I did is I just made this block of like twelve bars, and put numbers corresponding with the major scale one through seven, randomly in the blocks in the twelve bar thing, mm -hmm. and then would go ahead and assign um, it a key. So say like assign it the key of A flat. So the three would be a C minor, and mm -hmm. the five would be an E flat seven. And then would and then go and this is just math kind of music and kind of make up made up 
kind of, and then just and then decided to try altering things. How about if I did half the song in A flat, half the song in G flat, and just read or G seven or something? Mm -hmm. Anyway, it was a process of mm -hmm. a lot of that, that happened. screwing around, where I ended up with something like this, and then and the tune came after the changes. Absolutely, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I, kind of part of it because at the at the same time, I think I came up with that opening phrase. <laughs> I came up with that first phrase and uh, the rest just kind of seemed to kind of come together. It's one of the few tunes that's that I've ever built. I, I call them built. You know, I built this song. Um, and, this is, and this song, it's one of those, it seems to work and I think it's got a decent yeah. melody. The melody kind of is, that's listenable exactly to. exactly opposite the yeah. way I imagined it came together as I've been working yeah. on it. I've been thinking this whole time, well, the melody makes sense. He must have just written a tune and then found random changes that shared chord tones or something. Was I was convinced of... I was convinced that the tune came first. Oh, That's there was a lot of revisions, but yeah. it was but it was originally just a bunch of chords yeah. of monkeying around with and just trying to screw around with and see what you Cool. Well, let's show them. Let's show them. So, well, we'll do it a little again. slower. About the same speed the as same. the last one, I guess. green where I just never know really where I am somewhere in this form yeah it's a interesting chunk of changes and like a you know, <laughs> chunk of change um it's an interesting chunk of changes that's yeah. a tu that's a jazz tune <laughs> title right there there you go yeah and it's one of the few that seemed to really pan out I mean I didn't really write a lot 
in this way, and a lot of times they were just they ended up just being exercises. And well, you got to do that. You find a process but, and you try it a few times. Yeah. The um, and and see what that process puts out. It's a good exercise in remembering all your theory and all your mm-hmm. chord mm-hmm. stuff, you know, and try to. The only it. way I, a good friend of mine tells me the only way to have good ideas is to have lots of ideas. That's true, you know, and, and yeah, you those that's you know, yeah, you just keep on writing, you know, mm-hmm. keep on writing, you, and you come across, you you finally get one that's a good one, great, mm-hmm. next, mm-hmm. you know, that's the way I kind of look at it. It's you know, it's great that you got that good one, good, yeah. Next, you got it, because otherwise you're only as good as right, your last. Uh... Uh, clowns in my coffee. I really appreciate. It. This is a super fun samba. It's been a really fun line to play. Yeah. Yeah, it's got the sharp eleven built in there, so it's got that. And I love the Lydian. Yeah, the Lydian A section is very cool. This one's been really fun. Fun tune to work on. Um, and I appreciate the coffee reference. <laughs> Is there a story here, Clowns in My Coffee? Remember, there are kids and grandmas listening. Not is really. There a story well, actually, here? Clowns in My Coffee is, is is a misinterpretation of the Carly Simon song, where you're so vain. There's a, there's a part of the song where she says, the dreams were just clouds in my coffee. <laughs> really? And when I was a kid, I thought she was saying clowns, clowns in, in my, my coffee. coffee. And I kind of pictured like little clown stirring sticks. Yes, yeah, uh-huh. yes. Carly was stirring her coffee. Uh-huh. Clowns. I don't know what. That's my. I love it. Screwed up. Misheard. Misheard. Misheard lyrics yeah. is a. Is always a font of fun. fun Cl- stuff. And it, yeah, it conjures a, an a amusing picture. Clowns in me coffee. Uh, I'm insulted. Sorry, did oh horn player here. Yeah, I don't mean to insult horn players. But that was. That was. Sorry, a, mo- a, a misspeak. I take it all back. Horn players are wonderful, also singers. What, what did you What did you say in, in, in Oh, record? when I when I was talking about horn players changing keys and things. It's usually it's those cotton picking piano players. If you ask me, so, piano yeah. players. They're the they're, they're the, the culprits. Ones always key in the, and putting everything in F. Uh-huh. It's a nice piano key. It fits a it hand is. real nice. Right, so, right, right. So those um, are characters I'm telling you. Samba. samba. Okay. Um, yeah, how how samba do we want this? Like that. Do the toggle. Do oh. the toggle. Hey. There you go. Right. Yeah. So I'm going to do like a little intro and then we're going to stop, okay? Ooh, a stop. We'll go with a little stop.
super fun songs. song. Thank super you. fun tune to Thank play, Mark. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for bringing that one. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's been a highlight these last couple. Yeah, weeks. Yeah, that's that's that one. one uh, that's one that's turned out. It's got it's a fairly simple little tune. Um, uh, and I think I remember with the melody on that, I was—I think I was kind of deliberately trying to come up with something that. Notice how the melody doesn't come in on the one. One, two, three, four. Ba, one, two, three. Uh, 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 mm -hmm. so on the end of three. Mm -hmm. Two, three. Uh, uh, da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit different of a. I think I remember m messing around with that, D kind of deliberately trying to have a melody come in on the wrong. Offbeat. Come in early. <laughs> yeah. Come in early. Come in with a pickup. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was very cool. Very cool. I like the little turn. I like the use in the bridge. The uh, the D flat seven tritone sub for the G flat that bring or for a G seven that brings you to the key of G flat. That's a nice little modulation there. I, I dig it. And part of it too was there's a chord, a common chord tone in those two chords, right. D minor and D seven. The F. That you got F. the F. So yeah. it makes it work. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, oh, there, now we've. Yeah. And and also, but you set it up. You're in C. Yeah. Yeah. One, six, two, and we should go to five. We yeah. should go to G. That's what we expect. But you go to the tritone, which is still a five chord, but then use that to take you yeah. a half step lower than we anticipated. That's a cool little move there. Yeah. All right, okay. man. We've come to the end of our hour. Play a little stomping at the Savoy and yes. call it a day. I think. Yes, sir. I guess. So. Make some pancakes. Make some. I got some. I got some buttermilk. Some buttermilk. Uh, Bubbling in the fridge, yeah, ready for pancakes us. Pancakes at Darren's house. Mm -hmm. Hey, thanks for coming, everybody. We should check in. Oh, Kyle's here. Kyle says, great show. Do you know oh. Kyle Ola? Yeah, you know, I believe we've met once, but yeah. I want to know more about this toggle thing your thumb was doing, Darren. Oh, toggle it, toggle it. He was just talking about, I was hanging out, I was just hanging out on the four chord, and he wanted me to go four five. Toggling, toggling. I'm not doing anything with my thumb. Before the first, uh, between the first two chords of the song. I was just hanging on the four and he wanted four or five. Toggle. There you know, now you know. Barb says this was really great. Thanks for a great start to a Saturday. Barb, thanks for listening. Um, thanks everyone. This is Stomping at the Savoy and yeah. I'll be back. I'll be next, back next week all do by you, my lonesome. Do you want me to do the head on this one? Or? Yeah, sure. Yeah, okay. All right. Yeah, I don't. I'll be here next week playing it again, All right. like I do every week. So we should get yeah. you to play it while we can. Okay. Um, boo ba. But I think last week when we got together, I maybe counted this off a little bright. I usually do. Okay. How's this? That's good. Boo ba. Oh well. Sure. One, two, ah, two. <laughs>
everybody loves you all.